Hello everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to give an update about risk across the crypto market. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter where we put out regular updates about our risk indicators and more. So about once a week I like to put out these videos just giving an overall update about where risk stands from the perspective of our upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. So this is our machine learning based risk model we have here on the channel. The scores go from negative five to five, and there are three different time frames that we look at. There's the long term, which cares about moves that play out over months to years, so more macro level moves. Medium term, which cares about weeks to months. And then short term, that cares about days to weeks. So what I want to talk about first is just the Bitcoin UDPI. And again, as I mentioned before, Bitcoin kind of being the um, gauge for how the market is doing generally. Usually if Bitcoin is doing well, the rest of the market tends to do well, um, that sort of thing. I want to start here and see what the UDPI is saying about where Bitcoin is. So what you'll notice is that really ever since, um, you know, over the last month and even before, the long term UDPI has really just been in kind of a steady move up, right? We're sitting now at negative 1.63. That means there still is more upside potential relative to downside potential from the model's estimation. But we're not as lopsided as we were back in the actual bottom that we've had, or at least local bottom, back in January, right? And we can also see that in the medium term and the short term now, these are very much undecided. They're very close to zero, suggesting that there's relatively equal upside versus downside potential in these shorter term time frames. Now, how do I interpret this data? Well, one thing that I think the model might be picking up on is that we're kind of stuck in a range, right? We're kind of range bound between the low 30Ks and kind of the, the mid 40Ks for the last quite a while, you know, ever since, um, well, I mean, really ever since uh, late January, we've been kind of stuck in that range. And one of the things that can always happen when you're in a range is it's always a little bit of a question of which side you're gonna break out of it to, right? Are you gonna break out to the upside? or break out to the downside. Now, I think a lot of us are hoping we break out to the upside, but one of the things that I'm I'm thinking is likely that the model's picking up on here is that it thinks that kind of the longer we stick in this range, the less sure that we can be that we're necessarily gonna have to resume back to the upside, that there could be a capitulation before we move up. You know, um, some folks, uh, for example, Jay over at Daily Crypto Analysis have talked about how right now looks a little bit like the kind of uh, towards the end of the bear market in 2018, right before the capitulation, we we're kind of stuck in a range and then we broke to the downside. And so it's possible the model is picking up on that. It might be saying, wait a minute, you know, this could potentially not be so great if we had to stay here forever because there's no guarantee we have to break to the upside. And so really it might be recalibrating its downside estimation, increasing how much downside potential it thinks is realistic. And that might then be leaving the needle to move more towards the middle. So still is overall long-term bullish, thinks there's more long-term upside than downside. But my suspicion of why we've been in this uptrend for so long, is kind of the longer that we um, are unable to break out of this range, the more the model thinks that the downside is becoming more and more plausible. So that's something that we're just gonna have to keep in mind. We're gonna have to, to watch out for and see which way we actually break out of this range. The model is still overall bullish from that perspective, but there's no guarantee. There's plenty of downside potential. A capitulation could certainly happen. And I think that's what the model is starting to kind of build into its estimates to some degree as we sit here. Let's talk about Ethereum as well. So Ethereum actually is a very similar profile to uh, the Bitcoin UDPIs. You know, similarly at, um, in a similar place on the long-term UDPI and then similarly undecided in the more short-term timeframes. I think it's the same thing with Ethereum as it is for Bitcoin, most likely. You know, Ethereum did realize a nice chunk of upside after the, the local bottom in January. It went up um, over 50% from there, but now it's, it's closer to 20%. And again, I think the reason we're seeing these kind of general uptrends are kind of, and, and then the short term, we're sitting around the middle, is that really either side could happen when you're stuck in a range, right? Obviously, you'd hope you break out to the upside, but... If something happens, especially if there's some unexpected event that happens, and especially in the current macro condition, some kind of negative um, unexpected event that happens, a big capitulation could certainly follow. And I suspect that's partly, again, what the model is starting to build into its Ethereum estimates as well, is that it did identify the January bottom as being especially low risk, right? You know, with uh, Bitcoin is around negative three. I think Ethereum was somewhere down there as well. And then we bounced off of that and come up and realize some outside potential. But now I think the model is saying that because we've been stuck in this range for so long, 
because we weren't able to put in a convincing rally, now it needs to start uh, taking the downside a little bit more seriously. And that's, I think, what's going on here as well. Okay, so let's talk about the different altcoins across the different time frames as well. So I'm showing you here the long-term UDPIs for um, all the different altcoins that we're currently uh, tracking in real time here at the channel. And um, what you can see is that kind of over across the board with these, we're in the negatives. And to varying degrees, right? I think Luna is probably the highest, given that Luna just retested its all-time high recently, which is frankly quite impressive that Luna was, a Luna was able to do that in such bearish conditions. But across the board, everything else is in the negatives. And I'm not going to belabor this point because I made it before. But again, with altcoins, these are the higher risk parts of crypto. You know, altcoins are inherently higher risk than something like Bitcoin or Ethereum. And so really, when interpreting these values, I, I think that in bearish conditions, it's not necessarily prudent to consider zero as being that kind of neutral point, that recalibrating one's perspective down to, you know, negative one, negative two, maybe even negative three as being that uh, ideal level for altcoins in these kind of conditions can make some sense. And also not to, to think that we can't um, realize this downside potential. Um, you know, one of the things with these altcoins that I mentioned before is that a lot of these have never seen a bear market before. They just had to keep that in mind when interpreting these levels, right? For Kusama, Kusama's only existed in a bull market. And so now that we're in these especially bearish conditions, the model is having to learn a lot about what Kusama does and it's ending up kind of redefining what low risk is for Kusama. So I wouldn't see negative five here as being a good deal. I would actually wait for there to be a bounce, <clears throat> a decisive bounce off of this level before I might see that as being a sign that the bottom is in for Kusama. So just something to keep in mind with these younger um, assets is that again, it's all relative to its own history. If it doesn't have uh, really a full on bear market in its history, then the model is gonna be learning new things about it. So just keep that in mind as well. So medium term UDPIs as well are, are generally in the negatives. Again, Luna being kind of the outlier that's in the positive. Again, rallying up and retesting his all time high, quite impressive in these conditions. And then the same is the case for the short term as well, where again, most things are in the negatives, but you know, Luna here is up almost at three. And so personally, I don't see Luna being able to go any do anything crazy anytime soon with this kind of a short term reading. We'll have to wait and see, but that's my interpretation. But again, <clears throat> with these altcoins, you just want to take it in the context of the broader crypto market, right? You know, if Bitcoin is doing poorly, it's it's highly unlikely, in my opinion, that we're going to go and realize a ton of upside potential on these altcoins. I really think we're going to have to get to a position where Bitcoin is looking more healthy. You know, Ethereum, the, the broader uh, macro conditions are flipped more bullish before I'd start getting a lot more confident in the ability for these altcoins to go and realize this upside potential. Now, none of this is financial advice, of course. You should make your own opinion and interpret these as you will. But that's just my perspective of where we are right now. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on Twitter. And remember, with the UDPI, we're all going to make it.